give God praise. We give God the glory. We give God all of the honor. Say so yes. Go ahead and share, share, share. Get it on your page on tonight. We give God praise, honor, and glory for you all being with us here on tonight. We thank God that you've decided to stop by our yes. page just for a few moments as we go before the Lord and the Word of God, as we share the Word of God with you. Amen. I don't know about you all, but there is life in the Word of oh, God. Yes. Oh, There's yes. freedom and liberty yes. in the Word of yes. God. The yes. Word is meat and bread for our soul. Come on. We are hungry. Hungry soul, the word is the filler for the hungry yes. soul. And so tonight we come to get into the word of God and to find out what God is saying to us in this hour. Amen. Amen. To come Amen. into the place, to get here and to get before the Lord and find out what is God saying as we're moving into these last few months of this year. Amen. Amen. Good to see Amen. you, Nicole. Glad you could yes. join us on tonight. Amen. Amen. So let's get ready Amen. to go before the Lord in prayer as we prepare for breakfast of bread on tonight. Amen. Amen. Yes. Amen. Father, we thank you tonight for your word. We thank you tonight for what you're going to say. We pray, Lord God, that even now as we decrease, that you would increase in us. I pray that the word that you got through our mouth of our pastor, that he would share it with clarity. We thank you for boldness. We thank you for instruction and insight. Father, tonight we thank you for Holy Spirit transcending through the airways and for every person that's on this line that they will be touched in the name of Jesus, that not only would they be hearers of the word, but God, they will be doers of the word also. So, Father, we thank you for what you're going to say to us tonight. We receive it with a hearty amen. We receive it with open hearts. We receive it with open minds. And we receive it, God, and knowing that it is your infallible and uh, unadulterated uh, word of God. And so tonight, we thank you for the word. And we thank you that there is life in the word. And so for that, God, we'll give your name all the praise. We take no glory from you, but we give all the yeah. glory and all the the honor to your name. We bless you. We praise you in Jesus name. Amen. 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 Again, we want to say welcome. Good evening to Faith Charge on this evening. And we're so excited you all have decided to join us. You know, you said something so key. You know, the Bible does say that the word of God is life. Yes. And then when you think about that, the Bible says that man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds or comes out of the mouth of God. Yes. So I don't know about you, but how can we live without the word? Yes. Come on. That's good. Because there's life in the word. Yes. And for you, for some of y'all who just been joining us, we've been talking about for the last several weeks, are you fruitful? Mm -hmm. And we want to continue on that vein because last week we talked about one of the fruits is self-control. And I just felt that actually, you know, we didn't get a chance to finish it, so to speak. I just want to kind of add to what we were talking about last week as it pertains to self-control. And we were coming out of Second Peter chapter 1, mm -hmm. beginning at verse 1 through 5. And I'm going to start at verse 5. And verse 5 basically says that since you have these things, add to your faith or make every effort or strive to add to your faith. Our faith is our foundation. Mm -hmm. And so when we add to our faith, it's saying add to your faith. Add what? Goodness. Mm -hmm. You know, then it said after you add goodness, add knowledge. Mm -hmm. And that knowledge is of Jesus Christ, having a relationship with him and knowing him. And then thirdly, it says after you add knowledge, add self-control. Yes. Which we began to talk about last week and we want to continue on tonight. Mm -hmm. Self-control. So what is self-control? You know, self-control is basically the ability to control oneself, mm -hmm. Hmm. particularly one's emotions and desires or expression mm -hmm. of them during difficult situations. Come on. Or in other words, controlling your behavior mm. in difficulty. Mm -hmm. okay. And so when we talk about being fruitful, we're talking about um, being beneficial, mm -hmm. being providing good results. Yes. You know, because, you know, Jesus said that, that we would be fruitful and that our fruit will remain. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. God is calling us as believers to be productive. Mm -hmm. That's part of being fruitful, that we be productive. Yes. That our lives, you know, mean something. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that we don't live life, you know, meaningless. Yes, come but on. But we live life with a purpose. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so as we look at, you know, self-control, last week we gave three main parts that can 
that has to deal with self-control. And I just want to kind of go over them, mm -hmm. not in, in its entirety, but I just want to kind of give you um, just a, a, a short, you know, ideal clip on it. But basically we said uh, three parts of self-control is number one, monitoring. Mm -hmm. In other words, keeping track of your own emotions, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. your thoughts or your feelings. Right, right, Think right. about it. If we kept track of what we said, <laughs> we will watch what we said. Come on. <laughs> the Bible said that we are to season our words with salt. Mm -hmm. So that's the first part of self-control, mm -hmm. monitoring our thoughts, mm -hmm. our feelings. Yes. And then secondly, we said there should be a standard. Oh, yes, yes, as, yes. As it pertains to self-control, what? A standard is something, a guideline. Yes. Something mm -hmm. that directs us. Mm -hmm. And we know as a believer, the Holy Spirit said he will lead and guide that us into all, all truth. truth. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And on. then thirdly, it said strength. Mm -hmm. Because think about it. To control your emotion, it requires strength. strength. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because for some people, they want to say the first thing that comes to their mind. Mm, but the Bible calls that foolish. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ain't that something? Come on. Come on. And so... When we talk about strength, we're talking about energy, control, mm -hmm. impulses. Control your impulses. Mm. Don't just fly off the handle. Come on. That's because good. you feel that way. Yes. Yes. And because you feel a certain way, that doesn't necessarily mean that you ought to say what you feel. That's right. Mm -hmm. Especially if it's contrary to the word of God. God. That's right. That's think right. Think about mm -hmm. that. Because you're held accountable for every idle word that you speak out of your mouth. That's right. And so we got to be really strategic and really careful about what we say out of our mouth mm -hmm. and what we're saying uh, as it relates in this season about things and about people and about circumstances as God is listening and recording what we're saying. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because you think about it. When something goes out of your mouth, you can't bring it back. That's right. That's right. Mm -hmm. Because God said the things that come out of my mouth mm -hmm. will not return to me void. Right. And so if he says that for pertaining himself. to himself, yes. guess what? It's the same for us. There's because we're made in his it. image. Yeah, you can't get words back. You can't get words back. Mm -hmm. And you got to be careful because those words will go into the atmosphere and attach with whatever you've set, a, set to it. So, so if you say something about an individual, those words go and attach itself and bring back to you whatever you sent out. That's right. And so we got to be careful that our words are spoken with life. And not death. That we're not speaking death and life. That's mm -hmm. what the Bible says. That death and life is in the power of the tongue. That we're not speaking death with our tongue. But we're speaking life. And declaring what God says. Because God is a God of life. He's a God of liberty. He's a God of justice. He's the God of peace. And we've got to be speaking what God is speaking in this hour. Irregardless to what we feel. And irregardless to how we feel about things. We still got to speak what God is saying. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. Because what? What, what did the Bible says? God says, forever, O Lord. Mm -hmm. His word is settled mm -hmm. in heaven. Mm -hmm. Come on. Mm -hmm. And so, so we got to keep that mind. So whatever God has already spoken, yes, it's, it's settled. settled. That's it's it. It's settled. And that's what we got to be convinced in, that God's word is settled. Yes. And we can't be wishy-washy on the settlement of God's word. We can't go back and forth uh, between two opinions mm. in God's word. What did God say? He right. gave seven things that he hates. Come on, he gave seven things that he hates. We can't go back and forth between two opinions of whether or not we're going to believe what he said or whether or not we're going to doubt what he said. Come right. on, are we going to believe what he said or we're going to doubt what he said? Are we going we going to agree with what he said? Come on, then that's a whole nother level. Are we right. going to agree with what God said or are we going to disagree with what God said? Because God is watching in this hour to see if we're agreeing with him or if we're disagreeing with him. And you said some key because because what come the on. Bible says that we shouldn't add to the word nor take away. Come on, come on. Because the word is good all by itself. Mm -hmm. The Bible says that it's flawless, mm -hmm. it's perfect, yes. it's true, yes. it's right. God is right. Yes. God is perfect. God is true. Yes. But I, I'm, I'm afraid, and, and, and I'm using that way of afraid in, in a loose term, meaning it, it, I stand in, in amazement at, the, at how we are unafraid or, un, uh, or unreverencing of God. 
Uh, he is perfect. Yes. And he is perfect in all of his ways. Right. And what he allows and what he uh, uh, allows to happen is in his in his perfected will. Yes. And that's what we don't like when God does things and it's not what we like or it's not according to our agenda, but it's according to his agenda. The Bible says that his his thoughts are not our thoughts. Come on. The Bible says that his ways are not our ways, yes. but he's a perfect God. He's perfect in everything that he does. And you said something so key. I want to just repeat that. You said his ways are not our ways. Come on. And so, in essence, what man qualifies, God rejects. Come on. Come on. That's the truth. And what God reject qualifies, man rejects. Come on. And we see that. See, 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 what we go on is what man is qualifying or what man constitutes right. as good, what man constitutes as bad, or what man constitutes as being uh, appropriate or proper. But God has an agenda. God has a, a proper way of doing things. And I, I, I'm concerned as to whether or not we are, we are in agreement with God or we're disagreeing with him. Hmm. And uh, so, and as we talk about self-control, why should we have self-control? And I'm going to give you one scripture, mm -hmm. and then we're going to get into it, and, and we'll wrap this up, okay? Mm -hmm. Now, why is it important that we have self-control? Listen to what it says there in Ephesians chapter 4, beginning at verse 29 through verse 32. Listen, mm -hmm. it says, when you talk, Ooh. don't say anything bad. Mm -hmm. I'm going to read some more. Mm -hmm. Let's stop right there. Mm -hmm. What? Now... <laughs> I don't see where there's any confusion with that. It what? said when you talk. When you what, Pastor? When you talk. It uh, says don't say anything. Not some things. It said don't say anything. What? Come on here. Bad. Come on, Pastor. Talk then it says, us. but say the good things that people need. Whatever will help them grow stronger. Mm, come on here. So if I say something bad, that's not going to help you. No. Mm -mm. Come on. That's going against you. Yes. Come on. So now, did it also say, then what you say will be a blessing to those who hear you. Mm -hmm. And don't make the Holy Spirit sad. Mm. So if we say something bad, that makes the Holy Spirit sad. <laughs> that rhyme, didn't it? That's the scripture. Oh, my God. Teach then on. it says, God gave us his spirit as proof that you belong to him. Mm -hmm. Now, oh, now, we, we got to make sure. Now, Whoa. oh, God. We got to make sure God didn't make a mistake. Right. Come on here. He gave us his spirit Come on. as proof that we are his. So let's, let's prove, to prove to him that he didn't make a mistake in choosing us. Yes. <laughs> Y'all, that's good right there. Come and, on. And that he will keep you safe until the day he makes you free. Come on. That's good, Pastor. Never be bitter, angry, or mad. Mmm. Come on. Never be bitter, angry, or mad. Never be bitter. Never. Never shout angrily or say things to hurt others. Mm, 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 mm. Now, you know, there's some things we say you shouldn't say never to, mm -hmm. but the Bible said never. Never. Mm -hmm. So if God is saying never, then he means never. That's right. That's right. That's right. Then, so that means if, you, if you're going to not talk that way, that means you got to exercise a level of control yes. that keeps your tongue. That's why the Bible says that we have to put a bridle over our tongue. I ask the Holy Ghost to put a bridle over my tongue. Keep my tongue from saying what I ought not to say. Keep my lips from speaking what I ought not to yes. speak. Keep me, God, help me to keep myself to, to, to not do or say anything that will not bring glory to you. Mm -hmm. Because you think about it, anybody can say stuff. That's right. But mm. it takes, you know, self-control. It takes power to close your mouth. Mm. Good God. Woo-wee. Power to close your mouth. And that's the sign of strength. Yes. When you can say something and, and you, you choose, don't say and it. you choose not to. You choose not to. Come on. It's a decision. Right. Come on. It's the power of deciding not to say something. Because you know who you are. Mm. When, come they, on, come when, on, when come they on. When they questioned you, they said, 
Are you the king of the Jews? Yes. And the Bible said he answered them not a word. God, and he could have said anything. Yes. He could have spoke to them. He could have cast out the yes. demons. Come on. He could have called them all out of what they were doing. But he decided to keep his mind. He exercised such an authority over his own self. And he was God in flesh yes. form. My God. He had the power to say whatever he wanted to say. Because he was God. Right. And not so much that if he would have even thought. Yeah, come on, Pastor. Come on. And it would have happened. That's important, Pastor, that we watch what we're thinking, how we're thinking, because what you're thinking is eventually going to come out your mouth. Yes. Ooh. Out of the abundance of the heart. The what? mouth The mouth speak. speaker. Mm. So now, then it also says, never do. God, look how many nevers in this come one on, scripture. Come on, never do. Huh? Come on, that's good. Never do any. Thing evil. Mm. Be kind, loving to each other. Mm -hmm. Forgive each other the same as God forgave you through Christ. Yes. Yes. Never do anything bad. Mm. Never say anything <laughs> bad. Never be angry. Ooh. But now guess what? God knows that we're in flesh form. Right. He knows that we have flesh that we got to work through. He knows all those factors, but yet and still, he still puts in the word of God. There are certain things I want you to exercise that doesn't bring me glory. I need you to exercise self-control so that I get the glory the most out of your life. He knows our flesh state. Mm -hmm. Come on. Some of y'all saying, but come on, that sounds so good and that sounds so real. But guess what? My flesh be fighting. But guess what? He's giving you the power to exercise self-control. That's your power. Right. That's your ability. That's in you. He's not going to come and just put his hand over your mouth. You got to put your hand over your mouth sometime and say, close it. Mm -hmm. Don't say another because word. Because and, and, and when we read uh, 2 Peter in the uh, previous verses, he said, the Bible said he's given us mm -hmm. all things mm -hmm. that pertain to, to life, life and, and godliness. godliness. So the question is, what are we doing what we've been given? That's right. That's right. That's right. If you you know the saying, if you don't lose use it, you you're gonna lose, you're it. Gonna lose yes. it. Yes, yes. So we have to use what we've been given. Yes, that's right. That's right, Cheryl. Some things are better left unsaid. Yes. Huh? Some things that don't need to be said at all. And so if we keep our mouth, see so see, I don't want my mouth to sin against my body. Y'all better hear that. That's good. I don't want my mouth to sin against my body. Because what comes out of my mouth is an indication of what's inside of me. Come on. Mm. What's coming out of my mouth is an indication of what's on the inside of me. And so God is looking at what's on the inside. Come on. Because he said in the scripture, you praise me with your lips, lips. your mouth. But your heart. But your heart is, is far, far from me. Because I'm looking at your heart. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Wow. Huh? So now, because, think, look at this. Now, you know, there's some people that have to take medication, right? Right. Right. And certain kinds of people have to take certain kinds of medication. Mm -hmm. And so, and with the medic, I'm not a doctor, but what the medication does, you know, it, it'll calm you. Can you? You know, mm -hmm. it'll relax you, mm -hmm. it'll stabilize you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Why? But now, let that individual get off the medication. Mm. Let that individual don't take the medication. Mm. It'll be a sad day, won't it? Come on. We'll see a huge difference. That's right. In well, behavior, yeah. In behavior. Yeah. Well, yeah. Let, me, let, me, let, me, let me throw this out here. The Holy Spirit is our medication. Would you go ahead, Pastor? Huh? The Holy Spirit is our medication. Because if we don't allow the Holy Spirit to lead and guide us in all truth, we're going to see some ugly behavior. That's right. That's and that's right. the indication that the Holy Spirit is not in control, is not operating. Mm -hmm. And that we're being led by our flesh Come and not of you. the Spirit. That's good. So Pastor. the Holy Spirit is our medication. Yes. Hmm? It leads you into truth. Right. It guides you into and, and and the Holy Ghost, come on, will you listen to him? He'll tell you, don't say. It. Right. He'll say, Don't open your mouth. 
He'll tell you, be quiet. He'll tell you what to say if you have to speak. Come on. If he need, if he if it's needful for you to speak, he'll give you what to speak. That's why the scripture says, don't worry about what you're gonna say, because in the very hour, come on, yeah. God'll give you what to say. Right. He'll give you what to say. Why? Because he knows what you should say, what you should. That's why he's the God of that's why he knows all things. He knows he's the God of all things. He knows all things. And so you consult with Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit will give you what to say say and he'll give you when to say it and how to say it that that that, that brings a, 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 um, all of the, the 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 uproar or the fighting or the dissension down come on that's why a, a, a what is it a, a, a kind word turns Enjoy away wrath, wrath. Yes. and so the Holy Spirit leads you in the how to do that that's why you got to consult Holy Ghost yes you so, got to consult him so in other words in order for us to function properly, mm, we mm. need the Holy Ghost. Absolutely. And I'll be wondering sometimes, how can folk, you cannot function without the, the Holy, Holy Spirit. Ghost. Come on. Praying in your most holy faith, yes. you can build yourself right. up. That's why, that's why if you've been on any prayer call with us, we go into prayer time and sometimes we pray and we just stay there in our heavenly language. Why? Because there's a building up of your holy, of your holy faith. It's a building up of your inner man. It's a strengthening that comes when you pray in your heavenly language. And not only is your heavenly language, it is the language of heaven. Right. Come on, it transcends you from first heaven where you're in flesh here in the earth realm and takes you directly into the heavenly realms with God. And so the Holy Spirit spirit he helps you he's a spirit he is the wind of god he is yeah. the breath of god he is the ruach of god he is the wind of god that comes to sit with you to help you yes come on that's why you have to consult with holy spirit that's right and so how can we say we have the spirit and not rely on come the spirit? on come on come on come on that's good stuff come no, on no no that's not possible holy spirit and Holy Spirit will lead you into all, all truth. truth. He won't leave you out there in error. Come on. He will lead you into all truth. He will take you from where you are to the place of truth. If you ask him to take you to the place of truth. Right. Come on. Many of us are not asking God to take us to the place of truth. We're going on what we're hearing and we're declaring it as truth. But God is a, has a realm of truth. Yeah. He wants you to go. Right. Because he wouldn't say never do something if it wasn't possible. Come on. Because he knows all things. Oh. Because the Bible says all things are possible to with them. God. Yes. Hmm? But impossible with man. So now, let's God. look at a couple points. We're going to wrap this up. How to how to know that you have self control? Isn't that a good question? That's a great question. How I'm gonna do give you, you know? a couple points. I mean, it's so many, but I'm gonna give you a few that has come to my mind. How to know if you have self control? Mm, 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 Number mm. one, when your desires means less than God's. Mm, 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 mm. In other me. words, when yours are not all that important. When your desires when your desires means less than God's desires. Romans chapter eight. Verse number six through eight. Listen what it says here. It says, peace. Why is this true? Because anyone who's thinking is controlled by their sinful self is against God. Mm. If they refuse to obey God's law and really they are not able to obey it. Mm -hmm. Those who are ruled by their sinful selves cannot please God. Come on, come on. So in other words, it's saying that. If you are controlled by your sinful nature, we cannot please God. Come on. We cannot obey Him. Mm -hmm. Which means our desires mean more yes. than God's desires. Come on. Which means you are in control instead of God being in yes. control. Yes. Th that's why we got to check our heart. Pastor. Yes. Because our heart is where our desires lie. Mm -hmm. Our heart is where our attention and our attraction lies. So if I, my attention and my attractions are drawn out to the things of the world, then my desire is going to be greater than God's desire. Mm -hmm. God's desire for my life is to live according to his word. Yes. But if I let my desire be connected to the things of the world, it's going to draw me out from God into the world. Mm -hmm. So my desire, my attraction and my attention have to be in connection and in alignment with what God wants. In other words... God should be more important yes. than us. Come on. And mm -hmm. then important than anything. Right. Come on. God should be more important. Right. Because the Bible said, in him, Jesus. we move. Come on. 
and have our being. Yeah. We live and move and have our being in Him. Come on, that's good. So now, number one, when I when your desires, Our desires are not mean less mm -hmm. than God's desires. Look, look at it. the second one. When God has more control than you. Mm. In other words, when that God's in the driver's seat. Come on. Not you, not me. When God has more control. God has more control. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. So who really is in this driver's seat? You know, you see those are the, those are the um, uh, bumper stickers. And he says, God is my co-pilot. Co -pilot. I don't co -pilot. like that. I don't like that. You know why? Because it's almost like you the pilot and God's on the side. He's just helping you. No, God is the pilot. You call him. Right. Okay, so come on. Let's just be honest about it. Come on, because we don't really have no control over our lives. Let's be honest about it. We don't. We, we, we think we do, but we, have, we don't have control. God is sitting in the driver's seat of every part of your life. Yes. And at the very moment and hour and day, it's your time is up. He's still in the driver's seat and in That's full control. Right. Come on, y'all. Uh, he knows the days and the times. Come on. He established the day from the night. Come on. He set the water in the uh, Come on. He separated the, uh, the ground from the water. Come on, he established everything. So there's nothing uh, that, that gives us to even think that we are on this, on this journey co-piloting co anything with God. Come on, God is, is driving. We just happen to be honored enough to sit in the seat or sit in the back seat or sit in the side seat with him. Come That's on, somebody. Right. <laughs> Let's just keep that real. And Come so on. we need to be like Abraham. He said, just go, and I'll show you where to go. Mm. Obedience at Obedience. his highest level. Yes. Mm -hmm. That man didn't ask. Listen, he what? Mm -hmm. He didn't ask no questions. Mm -hmm. He was just straight obedient. That's it. What is it that keeps us from being obedient like that? I, I want the faith that Abraham has. I, I want the faith and obedience that Abraham has. Uh, because Abraham didn't question God. He didn't doubt God. The Bible says his faith was counted as righteousness. And it's recorded in scriptures as the hallmark of a faith yes. walker, as a faith believer, as the first believer in the scriptures, Abraham was. Come and, it, on and, and the Holy Spirit didn't come on the scene yet. Couldn't even come on the scene. And he was able to obey God and he hadn't even come on the scene. We he, need the Holy Ghost. Right. We need the word. We need a prophet. Come on. We, we need, need confirmation. confirmation. Two and three we need confirmation. somebody to hit us over the side of the head. We need somebody to come and ring our ears and say, "Lest the Lord said it. Come on. Uh -huh. Before we obey God. Abraham didn't have any of that. He obeyed because he knew who was speaking right. to him. And when you know who is speaking, when you know who is talking, when you know the God, who is speaking, you don't doubt, you follow. He mm -hmm. never, uh, his faith was so strong, he never called into question anything that God said. He, the Bible said, when you said the Bible said, he didn't stagger mm -mm. at the promise. I mean, when you mm -mm. stagger, I mean, you kind of wave and sway. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. God said it, that settles it. Come on. Huh? It was a settled, done deal. Why? Because when God said it, it was settled in heaven forever. And Abraham believed it. Mm -hmm. Even though he and his wife were old in age. But God said he was going to be the father of many nations. And guess what? When God told him he was going to be the father of many nations, he wasn't even in, in position to receive that. Because his name was Abram, not even Abraham. And Sarah was not even Sarah. She was Sarah. God had to change their names. Here we go. God has to change their names so that everything in alignment with who they were was ready to receive what God was about to establish in them. And sometimes God will simply change a location for you, mm. change a, a trajectory for you, change a direction for you to release what he's got in store for you. He could not release that to Abraham. Abraham's loins was only carried one seed at the moment mm. that he was Abraham because Abram is, 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 is means one. Come on. And Sarah was on 
only a, a, a indication of a dead a dead woman's body, but God gave her life when he called her Sarah. Come on. He <laughs> gave her the life extension. Come on, y'all. He gave her the life extension so her womb could receive the seed that was now coming from Abraham, who was covered, who had all encompassed inside of him everything that needed to be done. Come on. So That's we got to make sure that we know who we serve in. Yes. See, Abraham didn't stagger. He knew who God was and he trusted him to the end. Come so when on. God speaks the word, the word already goes to the place that God sends it. Mm. And the word is waiting for us to get in position yes. so we can meet the word. Come on. Come on. Come on. Man. Come on. Come on. Oh God. Glory now, to God. Thirdly, Come how on. do you know you have self-control? When God is the God, not your pride. Mm. When God is, is the, God, the God, not your pride. Wow. Because if you're prideful, you won't let God to lead you. Mm -mm -mm. You let your own wisdom. You but think you know more. It's false pride, Pastor. Yes. Because sometimes we think we're letting God lead us, but we're not. It's a false sense of it's a false sense of humility that, that's disguised in pride. Come on, because we think we're letting God use us, God lead us, but really it's for a selfish motivation, a selfish gain. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm being led by God yeah. as long as my title is in the forefront. Oh, as long as I'm sitting in seats with people and I'm getting making strides, I'm, my, I'm getting popularity, or I'm getting on platforms. As long as these things are happening, I'm letting God lead me. But the moment God stripped those things and pulls those things down, God says, I'm not dealing with, I'm, we're not doing that today. Right. You're going to come down off of those things. That's when he ain't. That's when we start fighting God. Come on, come on, come on, come wow. on. Wow, wow. So in other words, we can't just trust God in certain things. We got to yeah. trust God in all things. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, the Bible says, uh, um, pride go before the fall. Mm. Huh? So the Bible says, yes, pride goes before the fall. Huh? And you got to check your heart for prideful places. Checking your heart. That you don't think that you're bigger than you are. The Bible says, think more, don't think more I, highly I, of yourself than you, you are. are. That's right. Huh? Now, it's one thing to think, to be confident in who you are in God and have a confidence that God is working and willing to do in your life as he's according and plan to do. That's right. It's another thing to walk around with a prideful boast like you're yeah. bigger or you have mm -hmm. more or you got, you, you got a monopoly on God that nobody else has. Come on, you can't be there. Ah, come on, we got to make sure that we're not allowing ourselves to be long, fall, fall into areas of pride. Yes. Glory to God. And so that's why it's important that we control our emotions. Yes. Stay in self-control yes. and be governed by Holy Spirit. Yes. And so now, when God is the God, not your pride, Proverbs 29 and 18 says, if a nation is not guided by God, mm. the people will lose self-control. Mm. And it looked like this is what we're saying today. Come on, come on. But the nation that obeys God's law will be happy. Yes, come on here. Hmm. Come on. Happy is a man who puts his trust in God. Yes. So it's saying, if God is not guiding us, a people or a nation, yes. people are going to lose self-control. Yes, Which come means they're not going to have any restraint. Come on, come on. They're going to run wild. Come on, that's what we got to They're going to be untamed. Be yes, yes. Come on, Pastor, that's good. So the Word of God allows you to have self-control. It yes. governs your life. It yes. tells you how to live rightly. Yes, it's mm. good, Pastor. Profitable doctrine. Yes. That's what Second Peter, Peter 3 and 16, 17 said. All scripture is given by inspiration of God. Mm -hmm. Come for on. For reproof, for correction. Yes. For living rightly. It's huh? good, Pastor, that's good. Oh, boy. Come on. Come All on. right, let's look at a few more. How do you know you have self-control? Number four, when God can demonstrate his nature in you. Mm. Let me say that again. When God can demonstrate his nature in you, in me. Galatians, familiar pastor scripture, 5 and 22 says, but the fruit or the result, huh? That the Spirit produces in a person's life. Yes, that's good. So God is trying to produce something in our lives. Yes, come on, Pastor. His what? nature. His nature, mm -hmm. which is love, joy, peace, patience, mm -hmm. kindness, goodness, mm -hmm. faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Yes. So in other words, if you don't have all those things, you can't have self-control. You got to have those things first. That's right, Pastor. To have mm -hmm. self-control. Mm-hmm. 
That's good. That's good. Which means that allows God's nature to be demonstrated mm -hmm. in us. Mm -hmm. He wants his nature to be seen. Yes. That's why he says uh, in the scripture, it talks about um, uh, uh, when we become a, a child of God, we become a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Uh, he also talks about the nature, the new nature and the old nature and the battle between yes. the new nature and the old nature. Old nature wants to keep you in a stronghold, keep you in a, in, 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 in restraints to be free and liberated in God. And God, so the Holy Spirit, wants to bring you into a level of liberation and freedom yeah. where you are able to live unto the Father as he's ordained and and. And, and orchestrated and, and, and giving your life to live. He, he wants you to live in liberty and in freedom. But the enemy wants to keep you restrained. So the enemy will cause us to go back and forth in between the old nature and the new nature. Yes. That's why sometimes some of y'all, we slip up and we say cuss words. Why? Because the old nature rises up when we get mad and we'll have self-control to keep that new nature in control. And that new nature will close its mouth and not say things and not not to say. See, that's what we're talking about. Self-control. Wow. Right. The nature of God, keeping the nature of God uh, uh, alive and knowing that we're we're becoming what God wants us to become. Yes. We're, we're forming to the nature of God. Yes. We're coming into being children and ch uh, children of God that show forth his nature into the earth. Realm. Right. And it's unfortunate that a lot of words have gone forth during this time mm, 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 mm. unnecessarily. Mm, 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 mm. Mm, mm, Come on. Because the Bible says when we do such a thing, we have grieved the Holy Spirit. Yes, we have. Hmm. Come on. And then lastly, how to know you have self-control. When we live out the word. Mm. When we live out the word. Titus 2 and 2 says, teach the older men to have self-control. Mm -hmm. Be serious. To be serious and to be wise. Mm -hmm. They must be strong in faith, in love. And in patience. Mm -hmm. Also teach the older women to live the way those who yeah. serve the Lord should be mm -hmm. or should live. Mm -hmm. They should not go around saying bad things. There we go. Bad things about others or be in the habit of drinking too much. You don't drink, do you? No, sir. <laughs> mm -mm. That they was should old teach. Life. <laughs> old self. <laughs> they should teach what is good. Mm -hmm. So our life should be an example yes. of fruit on the inside. Mm -hmm. Because what the Bible said, we ought to show fruit worthy mm -hmm. of repentance. Yes, come on. That we have been changed. Mm -hmm. That we have been brought out of darkness into the marvelous light. Amen. Amen. And so we just want you all to be encouraged, strive. We got to make every effort to be fruitful in these last and evil days. Because yes. the Bible says that Redeem the times yes. because the days are evil. Yes. Make every effort. Yes. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Amen. So we just pray that you got something out of this on tonight. And if some of you always say, Pastor, you know, I'm not where I should be. You know what? None of us are where we should be. And it's the Holy Spirit that will help us to become all that God has called us to be. Mm-hmm. And if you're saying, Pastor, you know what? I've been relying on myself, mm -hmm. my flesh more than God. Mm -hmm. But today I want to rely on God, the Holy Spirit. If that's you, I want you to pray with us. Mm -hmm. A short prayer. Mm -hmm. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus forgive me forgive of my sins. my sins. I've fallen short of your standard of for my life. And I ask that you will come into my heart and to be my Lord and Savior. And I receive you now as my Lord and Savior. Guess what? Is that simple? Yes. If you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised from the dead, you shall be saved. And so for some of y'all, it's a rededication. For some of y'all, it's coming into the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. Yes. And so we, when we thank God for whatever decision that you have made. Yes. And God, we, we rejoice with you. Heaven is rejoicing yes. over your decision. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And so we just thank God for this opportunity. Yes. Amen.
To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Amen. Yes. Amen. 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 We honor God. We honor God. And we're thankful that you have given your heart to the Lord. For those of you out there who made that decision, if you just let us know by putting a comment into the into the uh, comment box and say, I'm in. I gave my heart to Jesus. I, I'm, 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 I'm turning from my, uh, from, from my ways. I'm coming. I'm, I'm going to walk in self-control. Whatever it is that you made a decision yes. on tonight, put those in the comments so we can celebrate with you. Guess what? We're all making changes and strides and becoming yes. all that God wants us to be. And that's the key word that we are becoming. We are becoming. We're becoming all that God wants us to be in this day and hour. Amen. Amen. And so with Amen. that being said, we just want to celebrate with you. Know that the angels in heaven are rejoicing that you have decided to give your heart and to give yes. your life to Jesus. Amen. Amen. So we celebrate with you as well. We celebrate the Lord and we honor you for giving your heart over to the Lord. Amen. God bless you, Shirley. Yes, God bless, bless you. you. At bless this time, you. we want to give you an opportunity to sow if you desire to do so. Uh, you can give to uh, Faith Christian Center many different ways. And if you desire to sow a seed into North and into Faith Christian Center, you decide to be a blessing to Faith Christian Center. We want to offer you that opportunity. At the bottom of the screen, you will see where there's an opportunity for you to give. You can give at our cash app at dollar sign, capital FCC, Lord Case Church. Or you can give at our Give a Fly app which is Faith Christian Center Reedsville, or you can go to our cash app or go to our text to give, which is our 336-585-8830. Whichever you decide to do, we are so honored and so thankful to have the opportunity to share with you on tonight, to be a part yes. of the fellowship with you guys and share in the word of God. If you've not shared this to your post, if you've not shared this to your timeline, would you do that now? Would you share it? Would you put it on your timeline even now? now and let others know what we've shared on tonight if you feel like it's been a blessing to you would you share it with somebody maybe it'll be a blessing to somebody else again we want to say thank you for joining us yes, on tonight thank you, thank you, thank you for every you. seed that you've sown in on tonight if you decide to sow a seed if you decide to give an offering thank you so much for partnering with us to be a part of the kingdom work and to do what ministry has called us to do in this hour yes. and that is to get the gospel of jesus christ out amen 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 Amen. 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 So by way of announcement, as we close out tomorrow night, at which is Thursday night, Thursday night at yes. 8 p.m., my husband and I will be right back for Let's Talk Marriage with the Manlies. It's a time when we get together and we share from our heart things that will be a blessing to other couples. And we believe we share some good things because it's been blessing us yes, as well yes. as blessing others. And so we want to invite you to join us over for, faith, for Let's Talk Marriage with the Manlies on Thursday night at 8 p.m., you can find that on my Facebook page at Kim Manley, or you can find that my husband's yes. page at R Roy M. Manley II. Yes. You can find us there, and you can come and join us. We have a great time. So we honor God, and we give God all the glory for you being with us tonight. May God bless you, bless you. and may yes. God's blessings rest upon you for the remainder of this week until we see you again. Take care, and God bless. God bless.